Welcome to Daily Game. We're going to start off with Hyper Light Breaker, which has been delayed yet again. Steam Early Access is now expected to start early 2025. According to Circana's Matt Piscatella, PlayStation Portal was July's best selling accessory in dollar sales, and the Portal has been the most successful gaming accessory of the year, with the Black PS5 DualSense being the best selling accessory of the year in units. Speaking to IGN, director Kerry Patel confirmed that Avowed has over 10 different endings it is playable at gamescom and previews seem to be a bit mixed but kind of looking positive xbox unveiled several new accessibility products starting with the xbox adaptive joystick for 30 dollars coming in early 2025 they're also providing free 3d files so players can print adaptive thumbstick toppers 8-bit do announced a wireless controller specifically designed for gamers with limited mobility and also the proteus controller a modular all-in-one kit is now available for purchase while plenty of xbox fans have publicly expressed that xbox is abandoning their hardware three new configurations have been dated they all release october 15th and october 29th in select markets the white one terabyte series s for 350 the white digital only series x for 450 and the why would anyone buy this at this point two terabyte limited edition series x for an eye-watering $600. Xbox continues bringing more games to PlayStation with Indiana Jones next spring. We have more data to support this move has found them some success. According to Windows Central, Sea of Thieves has sold over 1 million copies on PS5 since its April launch. And finally, Phil Spencer addressed Xbox's decision to release Indiana Jones on PS5, but since time is limited, I'm gonna play the only quote that mattered from his statement. And we run a business. And that's pretty much it. It's something I've been talking about a lot on the podcast, which is Xbox fans need to understand that not only is this a business move, a business decision, but it's also a business pivot made out of necessity. Xbox has basically with this move admitted that there is kind of nothing they can do to sell consoles at this point or enough to make any sort of dent and they might as well just kind of begin the process of selling these games elsewhere in order to recoup development costs a lot faster and get to that sweet, sweet gravy that is profit, um, which kind of just shows you that their numbers have to be supporting that. Because once you think about it, they could have announced Indiana Jones coming in December and kind of banked on probably, you know, a, a few or a lot of PlayStation console owners out there that are huge Indiana Jones fans, this game looks absolutely incredible, kind of saying to themselves, you know what, maybe I'll go out and buy a Series S just to play that game. And the same could be said for like a game like Doom the Dark Ages, where it's like, if you're looking at that game and it looks incredible to you and you only own one console, you know, you it's only $300 in order to be able to access it. Is it the best version? No, but it still runs pretty well. So the fact that that part is not even, that's not even part of the thought process means that basically they've just admitted that this generation is once again lost, that that's pretty much two lost generations in a row. Uh, I'll be talking about this more on Monday's podcast if you want to listen to what I think there this all means. I don't think that this necessarily means the end of Xbox, but it does definitely mean the end of Xbox as just a regular console release traditionally like we've always seen i think that those days are now over that's it for today like it if you liked it subscribe if you loved it and check out the camp Cody podcast every monday peace